Welcome back to my power chat with Justin Hughes here in the WTC Gig Powered Studios. We're sponsored by our friends at Blue Mark Energy. In the first half of our chat, we covered a lot of football topics. Let's get to some more fun stuff as we dig in deep with Kansas State linebacker Justin Hughes. <laughs> Welcome back to the WTC Gig Pirate Studios here in downtown Manhattan. As the Power Chat, sponsored by our friends at Blue Mark Energy, continues with Justin Hughes, K-State linebacker, entering his sixth season at Kansas State. That's a long time to spend in school. You should leave here with two degrees, (laughs) a master's, maybe a PhD. (laughs) Yeah, but I mean... It's cool, though. I mean... It's weird, but yet you can cover all your bases with what you want education-wise. Yeah, Pay, absolutely. Done. Absolutely. Like, I've already graduated with a gr- degree. I can get a minor in mass comm and journalism, and I'm going to finish with a coaching deg- I mean, coaching is a certificate. So it's like a lo- I'm getting a lot of things yeah. done, plus I'm doing the thing I love. So it's worth it. So I did not make the most of my time in college. <laughs> I got, most people don't. <laughs> I got into that final year like, I'm done with this. <laughs> so done with this. Now I wish I'd stuck around, got a master's, and yeah. you know. <laughs> but I was absolutely done with it. Uh, you're a Georgia guy, man. You yes, love sir. Georgia. What What is it about Georgia? It's home. It's like where I was born and raised. It's like you were raised in Georgia. You raised to think that it's the best state in America. Like at least on the east of the Mississippi River, minus California over there. They think they, in Texas, thinks they, they run everything. Like I realize, Pele is on the team. We argue about the best state all the time. Like we feel, me and Elijah argue with the guys in the locker room about where the best players come from, mm-hmm. where the best players go and all this kind of stuff. And we just, we have arguments, but at, home, at the end of the day, I think Georgia's home for me. And I think it's one of the best places to be. It's not it's affordable me and my girlfriend talk about it all the time versus dallas which is very expensive and we just we just feel like it's home for us so why is dallas expensive i don't know like uh it doesn't make sense to me it's it's kind of sprawls and i just don't get yeah dallas. it's like it, they're building uh cookie cut homes yeah. i guess they are like all of them are the same but they're very expensive like my home in georgia has five bedrooms, four baths, and it's $300,000. And my girlfriend's house in Dallas is um, one, two, three, four, three bedrooms and two baths. And so it's like, and that's $500,000. I'm like, golly, y'all don't even have a yard. (laughs) Like, where are you gonna raise your kids at? (laughs) And like, it's no land. No, that's that's not good for me. (laughs) I'm a Kansas guy. I understand when, where you're from, uh, you know, sometimes it doesn't work for a person, but. Mm-hmm. You're familiar with it. It feels good. If someone's going to go visit Georgia, give me a few things they got to do. Oh, somebody's going to visit Georgia. Um, I would say you got to go to the Coca-Cola factory. Uh, you got to go have some hot wings in Atlanta. That's what we're known really? for. Hot wings is the thing. Um, what else? The aquarium is the biggest in the world. Um, Six Flags is always an enjoyment. And I would say go to the Lake Lanier, but it's been so dangerous out there. People been going missing and drowning and all that kind of stuff. So That's less than uh, ideal. Yeah, that's yeah, way less than ideal. So um, those things are what I kind of like to do when I get home for break. And so I like to just take my girlfriend to experiences that, I, that I've experienced. So. Wife and I hit Savannah recently. Mm. Loved it. Mm-hmm. A lot of history. Mm-hmm. 
a lot of haunted things. Not yeah. good. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Savannah is like that where we go. They have this um, spring break thing called like Orange Crush, and it's like Savannah State kind of like runs the um, Orange Crush event and whatever. So it's a lot of uh, tour touring things. Like um, when I was a kid, we did 4-H, and 4-H is like a like agriculture sure. thing and just trying to get kids in tune with the earth and all that kind of stuff. And so every 4-H trip, we would go down to Savannah and go to the beach. And in Georgia, that's the only place where you can get to the water unless you're going all the way to Florida. Right. And nobody has time for that all the time. So we go down, to drive down to Savannah, have a good time. It's like you said, it's a lot of culture down there. It reminds me of like a Louisiana type area. Yeah. And yeah. so it's like, I like that place because Louisiana, my cousin went to LSU and I grew up with him. And so I love that environment and it's just an experience for me and I love it. So Okay, let's, let's get to that. Uh, a couple things here. 4-H. Mm -hmm. What did Justin Hughes do in 4-H? <laughs> Justin Hughes, every Thursday, Justin Hughes raised his hand and asked questions on different type of stuff like cows. I was interested in cows as a young kid, just how we got milk from cows and how did milk get into the grocery stores. Justin Hughes always asked <laughs> questions. His mom told Justin Hughes, never be afraid to ask questions. So I was that little kid that... Um, does anybody have any questions? And I was that little kid that Love always lo raised my hand and had to ask something, had to let myself be known, just let everybody know I'm in the room. That's what Justin Hughes did. Did any work. friends say, Justin, quit asking questions? A couple times, I, but I was, at that point in my life, I was just a little kid trying to be funny. But so after they did say that to me, Justin, stop asking questions so we can do go to recess. Right. So I did. Um, and you mentioned LSU. Mm -hmm. We got a question on one of our podcasts. We do an overtime. Like, it's just fun questions. And you're going to get five questions from me at the end of this. Okay. That, that. But one question we got was, if you could go to any other school just to go, you know, we're all K-State people, but what would you pick? I picked LSU. That's mine. Oh, man. We're Louisiana State home in uh, my house because my first cousin, he went to Louisiana he, uh, State University because he was a five-star running back. Went, he went to Tucker High School, and that's what, one of the reasons I wanted to come back to Tucker because he went there and had so much success. And my uh, older cousin who we live with is such a big fan of him because it's so, like you said about Savannah, uh, it's so much culture down there. When you go to Baton Rouge, it's just like you're getting great food, you're getting great sights, you're getting great everything, great people. And Louisiana State, if I could go to any other college, it would be Louisiana State University. Plus, we keep the purple. Oh, yeah, fat. No, I'm fascinated by the <laughs> Cajun culture. It's just yeah, amazing to me. What sure. a melting pot of different things. Mm -hmm. um, you did a really cool sit-down thing with Scotty Hazleton, <laughs> the surprise interview. I loved it, but I want to turn the tables a little bit. Yeah, uh, You talked about Marvel movies. Oh. I failed horribly in not asking Scotty about Marvel. I know. I I felt awful. I have recently been a Marvel convert. And I think that's probably why I didn't ask was when that your video with him came mm -hmm. out, I wasn't into Marvel. Mm -hmm. And then I got Disney Plus. Oh, okay. And yeah. I'm like, I'm gonna start watching these movies. I'm like, mm -hmm. these are actually good movies. Yeah, they they're really good movies. Like Marvel did a great I think they did such a great job. Like it's like I watch a different movie or a different series of anything and I'm like, this is not Marvel, like Marvel would have schemed it up a little better. I think Marvel did a great job schematically of putting movies out that connected them to the next movie or connected them to the past movie. And I thought it was just great. Like at first, I wasn't a Marvel uh, guy until until um, Ultron came out, the mm -hmm. um, Avengers, the Ultron. Right. And I tuned in. I was like, man, all these superheroes fighting together is crazy. And so I really went back and I'm asking people like, which one do I watch first? Which ones do I not watch? And it's confusing. It, it's, it is, it's a lot. Like you gotta go back. The first movie is like one of the first, Iron Man is the first one, but Captain America is the first Avenger. It's the first so, in the, the sequence. Yeah, exactly. It's, crazy. it's like you gotta go back to watch movies and you, at the end of every Marvel movie, it's like a little snippet they give you mm -hmm. just to tune you in to like what's going on and what happened. I, I actually screenshot it from my phone, the mm -hmm. list Someone offered the list. This is the order you should watch it mm -hmm. in. And I'm like, well, no wonder I'm so confused. Yeah, you got to uh, look it up online. I think Iron Man is the first ones you're supposed to watch, and Captain America's after, and they throw Hulk in there. Yeah, it's crazy. It's, I mean, it's, it's like, so much. This is, I, every time I watch Marvel, I'm like, 
Who's this dude? Yeah. Where'd this guy come from? <laughs> who's, your he favorite, who's your favorite hero? I'm a Captain America guy. <sighs> and I think it's because I'm from the 80s mm-hmm. and everyone did steroids, which is basically <laughs> what he did. Yeah. It's just high-tech super steroids that made him huge. Yeah, but for sure. No. Because in some ways he's believable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Well, how about you? I'm sad. Iron Man is my favorite. He's really? Gone. He's gone and... I'm just so just ruin that for everyone. I'm just, I'm just. Oh, I mean, golly, if you ain't seen Endgame now, then yeah, that's I your know. fault. I know. <laughs> and that was good. Yeah, man, it was crazy. Did you? I like. I love. I didn't notice it when I watched it, but at the end, the all the women, the women scene, all the women characters came in and won. That was Marvel's. They're amazing, man. They're it's really like do. it's crazy. I'm a Star Star Wars guy. They could mm-hmm. use from a little. Borrow from Marvel a little bit and how they weave things together. Yeah. Uh, we went as a team to go see the, not the latest Star Wars movie, but the one before that, I think. And the Last Jedi. Yeah, I think so. And um, I thought it was okay, but it's, I think I'm so far behind that it, like, I would be I would be lost. So yeah. I, mean, I can't catch up with the Star Wars, but I'm more of a Marvel guy anyway, so. You get Disney Plus, you can watch them all. Yeah, I, I, do, I do got Disney Plus, so I should tune into the Star Wars, huh? I'm gonna warn you. The first ones are kind of rough, oh. you know, because they made those in the middle. Yeah. Four, five, and six was the first ones. Mm-hmm. Then they went back and made one, two, and three, and one sucks. Oh, okay. So saying. I got to look up online on the order to watch Star Wars. Disney Plus lines them up. Oh, they one, did. One through. In fact, they made a, a non in the storyline. They made like episode, what would have been 6.5. Mm-hmm. Rogue One fits right in between six and then the latest trio. I might have to tell you. People in. are bored out of their minds if they're not into these movies. <laughs> um I got to ask you about this. Uh, before you became the big football star you are, you were most famous for a SpongeBob Krusty Krab <laughs> pizza. Uh, I I looked at it again this morning. It was epic, man. Mm-hmm. It that went kind of mini viral, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Uh, SpongeBob is my one of my favorite cartoons of all time, and me and Justin Silman, former running back mm-hmm. here, made decided we was like uh, we was in bowl prep actually. We actually got a pizza for like our bowl prep meal, and so we was outside and it was snowing. And it looked just like I'm like Justin, man. It, it looked like that scene. So I got this pizza. Let me try to do this video real quick. I started singing it, and he was like, "Man, get that on the snap, bro." And so he records it, and it just goes viral. We put it up on Twitter, and it just went crazy. People were asking me, uh, like, how did I come up with this or like this type of stuff. And, they taking a the video and posting it on their own. It's like on YouTube and stuff, Facebook. And I had I only posted it on Twitter. So <laughs> twelve thousand retweets. Golly, that's it's up to twelve thousand. Yeah, already. twelve thousand retweets. Did you go and watch the Krusty Krab pizza scene before you taped it, or did you just know it? I just knew it. It's it's like it's second nature to know SpongeBob for me because I I love that I love that cartoon is funny <laughs> that's 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 really interesting to me because uh, you know michael beasley one of the greatest athletes at k-state only played one year of basketball here mm-hmm. man he loves spongebob so oh much. really it was uh, he'd make a spongebob reference almost every press conference. <laughs> hey spongebob I, spongebob is arguably arguably the best cartoon of all time like it's been on for so many years people the views on it is crazy mm-hmm. it's like I was sad when they said they wasn't going to make anymore. So it's like, man, I, childhood out of there. I never believed that a sponge could talk. <laughs> so it's, hang up right from the start. Hey, you never know. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> now, I understand uh, you are a video game connoisseur. Absolutely. What is your go-to? Madden, 2K, Call of Duty. Basic stuff. Nothing... Okay, give me um, give me the best parts of those games. Madden, obviously, because I love football. Right. The uh, competitiveness, me, Isaiah Zuber, Duke Shelley, um, Eli Walker, um, Demario Jackson. We all have this group. And we call it Madden group, and so we're texting in group chats, arguing with each other, and telling who, telling each other who's the best in Madden. We all just playing each other and it's it's just fun. I'm a competitive dude so I like get on the game and I'm trying to win no matter what and they trying to have fun or whatever, I'm trying to win. So I like to talk drunk to them and so uh, that's the reason I love Madden 2K, same reason. I'm a competitive guy and I just like to win and 
Call of Duty is just it's a different it's a different feel like like Call of Duty is such a historic game. It's, mm-hmm. it's like I think it's the uh, most purchased franchise of all time in the video game uh, era. So like Call of Duty is so fun. It's like it's just like you kick it with your homies on online, and it's just like you having fun and just killing and shooting and shooting people. It's like you can act like you in the army for real, and it's just like it's so fun. So those are my three games. And Fort, I used to be a Fortnite guy. Yeah. But since Call of Duty came out, I'm all about the duty. I think Fortnite fell off the end of the table. I think bit. it did. When Call of Duty dropped its last um, game, I think it fell off. I would, I don't game. I did game in the, what have been the late 80s, early 90s, mm-hmm. to the point where my girlfriend slash now wife <laughs> had to take away the console and say, we're done. Oh, yeah. I was addicted, man. Yeah, we're in the, we're in the, we was in the same boat. My girlfriend, I go down to Georgia where she works at right now, and uh, she's at work all day, and I'm playing the game, and she comes home, I'm still playing the game, she's upset. I'm playing the game while we're on the phone. She's in Georgia, I'm up here, I'm trying to play the game. She, she hates it, man. They, they hate that video game. I just want sure. you, man. <laughs> I just want your attention and love. <laughs> I understand that, but and golly, I gotta have some free time. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't just, know. just like to ease my mind, and you know what I'm saying? Just chill. Yep. I would. I, if I got Call of Duty, I would never stop. Yeah. I'm just. Well, first of all, I'm a, a history guy, mm-hmm. and the way they weave the stories through story the history line. of, uh, and it's so well done. Absolutely. I would. I the would. Story. You have to. You have to play the storyline before you actually get into the online play. It's a it's a hidden rule. Nice. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna say now, uh, if my wife ever leaves me, I'm not gonna find another woman. I'm just gonna do <laughs> video games. <laughs> just look, put that on the table. <laughs> it's me, my dogs, and video games. Me, you, and both. Me, you, both. Yep. Um, let's get a little heavy now. Um, you know, I was I was not a Kobe guy. I'm, <sighs> I'm a little bit older. Um, I'm from the MJ generation, Magic, you know, that. I remember players that are long ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Lou Alcindor, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, you know, just, so I'm from a different generation. Mm-hmm. But I always appreciated Kobe's passion. Absolutely. And he went through the, you know, the trouble that he had, and mm-hmm. he came back and reinvented himself into a really, really good person. Maybe he was all the time, and he just kind of, as you said, you're young, you do stupid stuff, you kind of lose your way, you got to learn from it and and become a better person for it. And unfortunately, some people don't. Kobe was a really good man. And like I said, I wasn't a Kobe fan, but dude, his death hit me hard. Absolutely, man. I, Kobe's my favorite athlete of all time. And God, like when I woke up that morning, I'm seeing like, tweets about it, he's passed, and I'm like, it's, it's not real. And guys in the yeah. group chat saying, yo, Kobe passed away. I'm like, bro, shut up, like, it's not real. It's like, not real. So, Kobe's my favorite athlete of all time, and I grew up watching Kobe. My dad's a Laker fan. He called me to make sure I was okay. I, I learned so much from him, even though we played two different sports. I learned that you gotta take what you love so seriously, because if you love it, then you you can do something special and help others with it. And Kobe, he was a he was a teacher of the game. And like even the only thing I seen a tweet this morning, the only thing Kobe loved more than the game was teaching the game. Mm-hmm. And that's something that I want to instill in myself because I, I treat football as a game, and I like to put pieces together, and I like I like talking football all the time. And it's just like Kobe's put so much stuff in me, man, and just like that dog mentality and winning and everything and. I take that in everything, just like the video game. So you know, it it was tough for me because I, you know, seeing someone die long before they should. Yeah. But then finding out his daughter was on the on the helicopter and other young people were on the helicopter. I'm like, man, you know, it sucks Kobe passed, mm-hmm. but he had an incredible life, exactly. even at 41 years, whatever it was. Those girls were just getting started. Yeah, I know, right? It's like. Um, I found out Kobe passed the first at first I didn't know his daughter was on the plane and I'm like man this is a purpose his purpose was complete like I'm like he's done everything on this planet that he's possibly can because he was one of those guys that worked so hard all the time and maybe I was in my head I'm like maybe his purpose with God is complete and everything he's done is just it's been done mm-hmm. and Kobe's already worked to get to that level and so 
when I found out his daughter was on the plane, I was so sad because I was yeah. like, his daughter's just gonna continue on his legacy because she was a great basketball player. Sure. She was on his way to the University of Connecticut and she was gonna live on and be one of the best basketball, girl basketball players of all time. But I mean, God has a reason for everything. God has a reason for everything he does. And man, I just believe that this was a message to the rest of the world that time is short, man. And you gotta make the best out of your life. The thing I love about Kobe as a non-player was a lot of guys struggle when they leave their sport. Mm -hmm. What do I do? I had one football player tell me, uh, my friend Ben Lieber told me, that it was really tough on him because as a football player, everything's structured. Mm -hmm. You eat now, you work out now. You don't have decisions to make about that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just all structured, then football's over. Yeah. Oh, I gotta get a meal. Yeah. You know, just little stuff you don't think about. What I loved about Kobe was he transitioned into life and he put everything he had into coaching and his girls and his family he and business yeah. and his foundation. He transitioned all that energy that he had spent on becoming an incredible basketball player, mm -hmm. relentlessly becoming. It's not like, Absolutely. yeah, he was good, but he worked his way to be the yeah. greatest. And then he said, okay, I'm done with that. Now I'm going to do this. And yep. he did it. And he did it. And he did it great. Like everything Kobe does is – He's trying to be the best at it. And so once he was done with basketball, is he's coaching his kids. He's being a parent to his kids. He's opening up facilities for guys to train. Trey Deshaun is actually out there right now training at his Mamba, his Mamba uh, facility out there. And he's, he's trying to, he's having an influence on the game, no matter what game it is, for other guys. And he's doing it even passed away. And it's just incredible. Yep. How much his legacy lives on. Yep. He, he's passed, but he lives on. Yeah, it's really sure. it's amazing. Okay, I teased this earlier. Let's get a little bit lighter here. By the way, is Trey Deshaun the Kobe Bryant of defensive tackles? Is Trey Deshaun the Kobe Bryant of defensive tackles? Trey Deshaun is the Michael Jordan okay. of defensive tackles. Okay. Here we go. That's <laughs> yeah. fair enough. That's fair enough. So we do this thing, the overtime. I mentioned it. Mm -hmm. uh, had someone on our website ask you five questions. <clears throat> about anything, mm -hmm. although we've done a lot of that already. Mm -hmm. Randolph the Iguana is the screen name of this guy. Mm -hmm. Do you know who Randolph the Iguana is? Randolph the Iguana is the uh, fake iguana that mm -hmm. uh, Dante Barnett took to Padre Island yep. in 2015, my first year here in college. Bam. You got <laughs> the first one right. So this guy's screen name is Randolph the Iguana. I know him. Uh, I think we might have answered this. Favorite TV show growing up. My favorite TV favorite TV show mm -hmm. is SpongeBob. Right. Mm -hmm. Anything else that you watched a lot of? Um, Ed, Ed, and Eddie. What? Ed, you never heard of uh -huh. Ed, Ed, and Eddie? It's three guys walking around that cul-de-sac trying to make fifty cents so they can get jawbreakers. That's the storyline. Wow, that's deep. It's funny. It's, it's funny. Funny. Okay. I'll, I'll look it up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, biggest thing you miss about being home in Georgia? The food. 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 My aunt, whether it's my aunt's cooking or me just going up the street to Atlanta's Best Wings and getting a Philly cheese steak with a five piece wing. Oh man, that sounds so good. Ah, man. I think about it all the time. Or Zaxby's. No, yeah. I'm going to think about it all the time. Yeah, for you sure. You like Zaxby's? You, you don't? It's okay. Canes or Zaxby's? Probably Zaxby's. I'm not. Okay, Kings okay, guy. okay. Bit, bit, bit. I, I don't believe that you should force me to eat your, that sauce, whatever yeah. that is. The Zach sauce? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The cane sauce. Oh, okay, yeah. It's the same. They they do the same thing. But, but I like Zach's better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Sorry, Canes. Well, we cool. <laughs> uh, favorite thing about Kansas? Favorite thing about Kansas is oh, the steak. Steak is way better here. It's amazing. When I'm back at Georgia, uh, the only state that maybe can compare is my cousin's chef, uh, state because he's a chef, but that doesn't count. Like I can go to any restaurant up here, get me a steak, and it's the best I ever had. I don't, and brisket. I love mm -hmm. brisket now, and I never ate brisket back when I was in Georgia because it wasn't a thing. Like, But when I come up here, I eat brisket, steak, and pulled pork, and the barbecue is so much better. It's amazing. Yeah, We know how to grill them cows here. Yeah, for sure. Favorite hit or play of your college career? <sighs> I got to think about this one. Favorite hit or play in my college career? Woo! Got to think. Hasn't come yet, maybe. Maybe hasn't. Uh, 
Did you ever scoop and score? I did, but that's not my favorite player. Yeah, I, see. I thank Reggie for that, though. Uh, favorite hit? Uh, probably um, the Kansas hit. Um, me shooting, me shooting the gap, and getting a stop for our, deep, our, our offense so we can score and take that game in and win it on Puka. It's always fun hitting the key player. Yeah, especially Puka. He's there. He's slippery. He, he's there, Michael Jordan. He's good, man. Yeah, he is good. Okay, here's the big one. Final question here. What would Justin Hughes do if I brought in a snake right now? Oh, nah. Don't don't tell me y'all got a snake, well, man. Of course I got a snake. No, 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 no. I can't do snakes. That's nah, nah. Y'all playing? I'm playing. Yeah, you know, I don't have snakes. Well, <laughs> I hate snakes, man. The snakes is my biggest fear on this planet. Like besides God, snakes is my biggest fear. I can't stand like little snakes, big snakes, any snakes, any snake. Like I treat all snakes the same. If I seen a little snake, I'm like, maybe it's poisonous. You never know. You, know? you get bit, like. Snakes are fast too. I know. I can't do no snakes. That ain't me. Those people that have uh, big snakes that mm-hmm. freaks me out. Like the boas. The big, yeah. Like people on beaches and having the. Have you ever heard the Jared Cooper story? You know, Jared Cooper played football here. Went on and played NFL. He's a safety, and Jared's not wired right. Oh. He had a boa constrictor, and so he's telling us a story about how he had to kill his boa constrictor because it constricted on him, and the story started with. I was taking a bath with my boa constrictor. What? Exactly. Like why? Like why? Like exactly. why do you have that animal? Like what? What's the point of having a pet snake? You know, just so you can feed it rats I, and watch it eat it. I, I I feel like any animal that could turn and kill you is not a good thing to have in your house. Absolutely, especially a snake. Hey, snakes get loose and then you don't know where it is and scare somebody else because you wanted to have a pet snake. Well, this is a good way to end this. <laughs> I don't think my dogs are going to turn on me. No, 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 no. Your dogs are loyal. What six, kind of dogs you got? 60-pound poodles, standard poodles. Oh, you good. Well, they're plotting against me. I know they are. <laughs> I know they are. How many you got? Do I got two, and then we got a Scottish Terrier who's uh, a million years old. Yeah. She's older than you. Oh, yeah, for sure. And you're 37 years old. Yeah, almost... <laughs> That's going to do it for this Power Chat with Justin Hughes. I'm looking forward to seeing this dude play in 2020.